All right, moving into force problems, let's go ahead and finish up this practice exam. Again, I um, said it before, but I'm following the format of the study guide, so um, that's why these seem a little bit out of order. So, um, question number five, um, translational equilibrium. This is another way of saying balanced forces. For forces to be balanced, um, well, you, you can be moving and balanced. Um, you can have forces applied um, and be balanced. And here, if you're moving with constant acceleration, you're not balanced, so it's really choice C. The resulting force acting on the object must be zero, meaning that the forces add up to zero. That's what balanced means. Here. Um, so this one, let's actually go into a little bit of detail on number four. I'm going to go ahead and actually draw a free body diagram for Y and for X. So I'll have the normal reaction force on X. I'll have the weight of X. I'll have F applied to X. And I'm going to have a normal reaction force on Y because X pushes on it. Sorry, we're talking about object Y here. Then for object X, um, I have a third law partner, which is I have a reaction force on X due to Y, which is equal and opposite to this force here. Um, I have the weight of X going down, and I have the reaction force on X going upwards. So we want to know which statement is correct. So Here's the thing. If Y is going to accelerate, um, let's be clear that we're going to have the force applied to the right minus um, the reaction force going backwards the reaction oil force going backwards is going to make Y accelerate. And in the for the little box, we're going to have RXY makes box X accelerate. Those are going to be the equations that we need um, in the horizontal direction. Of course, we balance vertically, so I'm not going to write those down. So here, um, choice C doesn't work because it just violates Newton's third law. Now, the force that Y exerts on X is equal to F. Well, let's just see. Um, if we had the force on X here equal to F here, these two forces would then be equal, and they would cancel, so that wouldn't move. Um, if F alone is equal to M times A, um, then this force takes away from that. It's got to be bigger than the acceleration of Y in order to overcome this force here, so that only leaves us choice B. We need this force here to be less than this force as the box can accelerate in the first place. Um, number seven, we're going to completely skip. We don't do that one. Uh, we haven't got to momentum yet. Um, eight and nine. This is something we got to memorize. Whenever we got something moving in the circle, the force always goes towards the center of the circle. That's in the study guide. Get that one learned. Um, 10, 11, and 12, we're skipping. Um, 13, 14, 15, looks like we got that done. Um, now, a body moves in a straight line. Uniformly accelerated motion. This means unbalanced forces, right? What needs to be true? Um, well, we can be moving and still have unbalanced forces. Falling towards the surface of a planet. Well, if you start off in outer space and fall, at first you have very little gravity, then it gets stronger and stronger, so that doesn't apply. Um, a constant net force acts on the body. That's true, but we can get more specific because if the mass changes, like in a rocket, um, you won't get uniformly accelerated motion. So choice A is the only choice. You need the max mass to stay the same, too. You can't be leaking stuff. Um, 17, here we go. This is kind of a trick question. So we talk about this thing called the force meter. The force meter reads the normal force, the force pushing up on the feet. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a normal reaction force here. We're going to have the weight. And we're not balanced, so we have R minus mg equals. Now we're accelerating downward, so I'm going to make this negative ma to indicate that we're going down. Okay. So keeping this in mind, R is the normal reaction force, which is also the reading on the force meter. So R equals mg minus ma when we do this math here. And um, that's how I'm getting choice B. 18, we're skipping. Um, 19, 20, 21, we've already done. For an object to be translational equilibrium, again, this is just another way of saying balanced forces. Um, well, if we're moving in constant speed, but we're moving in a circle, forces aren't balanced. Uh, we can be moving. We can, have, we can have constant velocity that's not zero. It would be balanced. Um, we don't need vertical forces necessarily, so D. 
We don't need these forces to balance each other. We just need that all the forces add up to zero. So that's how we get D as our answer. 24, 25, and 6 we've done. Um, here, aha. So let's go ahead and actually do some free body diagrams here. So um, we're going to have the tension in X. We're going to have the weight and the tension in Y. And then for the little 2 Newton thing, um, so this is going to be 5 Newtons. And then here for the little one, we're going to have the tension in Y. And then we're going to have the weight um, equal to 2 Newtons here. So these balance, so we know that TY equals 2 Newtons from this balancing. So then I can apply 2 Newtons here. So what that tells me is TX balances to be 7 Newtons. So that's going to give me 7 Newtons for X, 2 Newtons for Y, choice B. Um, and then 27, we want the final velocity here. So um, I got a couple things. First, let me just write down, when I don't have a free body diagram to draw, I just go with F equals MA. So let's see what we can get. We want the mass, so we got 12 equals M times A. I don't know what A is. So I've got a time. I've got um, a V final. And initially at rest means U is 0, 0.0 meters per second. So I'll use V equals AT plus U to get the acceleration. That's going to be 6.0 equals A times 3.0 plus 0, 0.0. So A is going to be 2.0 meters per second squared. Throwing into the formula, I have 12 equals M times 2.0. So M is going to end up being 6.0 kilograms. All right. Um, continuing on here, we got these done. Um, these done. Now here, sliding at a constant speed. So let's actually figure this out. Um, since we're going at a constant speed in a straight line, our forces should cancel. So this diagram is clearly wrong because weight needs to point straight down. Okay, that's why it's wrong. Now here, um, the normal force is clearly bigger than my weight here. We can't have that. Here the normal force equals the weight, which means we don't have cancellation. The only possibility we have of forces canceling is this picture here. Let me just see if I can draw this. See if we can actually get this to combine and cancel. So we've got this one here. And then we got this little force here. Do they actually cancel each other out? Let's just draw the picture and see. When we actually draw and cancel, when we do the head-to-tail addition, we actually get the three, three vectors add up and form a nice canceling triangle. If that's a little hard to see, all I'll say is this. I've got the normal force less than the weight, which it needs to be, and I've got the friction force less than the weight as well. So choice B is really the only choice that will work. So that's it for number four. Um, five and six, we skip those completely. They are not problems we can actually solve until we have a little bit more physics under our belt. So that wraps up all of our videos for this practice test. I hope this was helpful. And I'll put this online and uh, put links in the document for the study guide.